Men då har det bara gått över 2000 i plus. Vi har säkert nått. Vi, ser, vi har nått 2000. Bra. Vi säger det. High five. <laughs> jag vet inte om det har stått 2000. Har ju stått 2000. Nej, jag har inte varit med på några tusen här fram till. Jag inte det. Vi kör lite... Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this little live stream uh, where we're gonna demo uh, Crusader Kings 2 Conclave for you guys. My name is Henrik Foreus and I'm the game director and this is my good friend Henrik Hansson, Grugi. Uh, and he's gonna be actually controlling the game and playing it uh, and I'm just gonna sit here and comment <laughs> whatever yeah. happens. And some, and gonna... some might know I'm uh, the programmer, not just only a good friend. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I forgot to mention that. No, he's kind of a a lead guy <laughs> on the team as well. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. what were we looking at here? Yeah, so uh, I prepared a save before. I cheated a little, so um, I don't have to go through the reformation. So I'm already reformed pagan. But uh, otherwise, it's the sons of um, Ragnar Lodbrok, and I started my conquest of. Uh, the British Isles, and I'm going to demo some of the mechanics we have. Um, a pretty classic scenario. Uh, yeah. I like to play with the Sons of Lodbrok as well. Yeah, they're <laughs> usually my favorites, though I usually play more uh, this one, uh, Eva, the bonus. So we're doing it. But yeah, so um, uh, let's see, let's start. The, bi the biggest thing in Conclave, I guess, would be the council, like the new thing. Well, perhaps I should mention what the whole idea was yeah. with Conclave. Um, we've gone now for four years, and you have seen quite a lot of expansions to the game. <coughs> but very few of them have actually dealt with the core mechanics, and the fundamentals, if you will. Um, so I thought that we would kind of deepen the, the challenge and make the game harder in the mid to late game. Uh, because in my view, at least, that's one of the areas where the game has been lacking the most. Mm. Um, the cool thing about the, the feudal system is basically that you have to rely on your vassals. Um, and that's a bit, it's a shame really if you don't have to care about the vassal opinions because they're not very dangerous anyway. So <clears throat> that's kind of what we wanted to tackle uh, yeah. with Conclave, making the vassals matter more. Mm. 
Yeah, and I was throughout the three years I worked there nagging like, I kind of want to do something <laughs> like this. I want to do something about the council. I want to make them cooler. <laughs> Instead of just being the different jobs you have, I wanted it to be something you actually interact with and do something with. And like we see here, I have my trusty councillor Glitterhoof. I have Steward Orvar, Heistein, Olm and Katil. And they have their various positions. Like we have the loyalist, which is the beloved um, person that will always kind of act in your benefit as the king. Or yeah, I'm a petty king, so king. And you have the pragmatists, which are more like cautious, I guess you would call it. It's um, like they, they will act in their own self-interest. They're not that interested in the betterment of the realm. And then you have the zealots, which will act you know, according to what God wants. Oh, and the religious the, fanatics, yeah. uh, essentially. <clears throat> and then you have Glory Hound, which will, you know, he wants to make, oh, our kingdom is awesome. We're gonna, you know, fight the strong ones. And yeah. so like if I take... France, declare war. This is something we'll cover as well, but the glory hound loves that we're gonna fight someone stronger than us. Yeah, so, so. B the basic idea is we want to single out the five most powerful men in mm. the realm, essentially. So rather than have to worry about all your different vassals, because as you know, you can have a pretty huge empire uh, in the later stages of the game, you will have to worry about the five most uh, powerful ones. Of course, you can, uh, you can assign anyone to these positions, mm. Um, even the not the not so powerful vassals, if you will, um, but that means that the powerful ones, uh, the five most powerful men in the realm, or more than that, will actually be a bit uh, unhappy, <laughs> to yeah. say the least. And that's what this icon means. That it's a powerful vassal. And I, if I remember, yes, I have a son, which is actually a powerful vassal. Yeah. I should probably make him. Oh, he's probably a pretty good marshal. Uh, let's see. Do I have to? Yeah, I have to do it through this one first. So the trade-off is essentially, do you want the most skilled people uh, in council positions, or do you want to placate your powerful vassals by assigning them? Let's see. We have a few more. Uh, he's, he could be a seer. Uh, he's pretty much the same. Uh, I don't have that button. I need to go back. Um, let's see. So what else can we do? Uh, he doesn't like me, so I don't want to him to be my spy master. Uh, so I guess steward will have to do. Uh, was that him? Uh, that. Yeah, did you mention that red fist means that they are... Yeah, they're uh, unhappy because they don't yeah. have a position. <clears throat> yeah, but the fist means that they are powerful. Yeah. So um, we have uh, some at least. Let's see their position. So yeah, we have the glory hounds, the pragmatists. Let's see if we declare war on him. Yeah, most people would like it because, let's see, we have the loyalists, we have the zealot, they're Christian, so of course we have to attack them. Uh, we have the pragmatists, they're weaker than us, so why not? I'm curious why he, oh, he actually doesn't care, that's why he doesn't want so to. So can you, can you explain why uh, you need to care about what your counselors think? Yeah, uh, <coughs> we have, um, let's see if I can actually find, well, we have, if you do not, uh, act according to what the council wants. You can just ignore it if they don't agree, but they you will incur tyranny because you're kind of violating the agreement you have with your feudal vassals. Like, all right, uh, you ha you're in my council, so I'm gonna let you um, be part of uh, what's it called, like deciding what's what we're gonna do, and then they are not allowed. Um, so I'm wondering. Yeah. So while the council is content. Uh, which means that all your five councillors are quite happy and feel feel uh, valuable. <clears throat> you don't need to worry about them joining uh, factions. Yeah. But if uh, if you override them, the council will be discontent, which means that then you know the potentially five most dangerous uh, people in your realm will then be free to join factions. Mm, I'm trying to find someone weak enough that pragmatists would say no, so we can see the. Uh, yeah, the glory hunts doesn't want this war because th there is no glory in this war. The enemy is too weak, <laughs> but hmm, but everybody else wants to. Um, let's see if I can enable another law. As you can see, these uh, law screens yeah. are also updated. Uh, yeah. it's a new interface. Yeah, we've uh, made a <clears throat> completely new one. We have this. I love this one uh, that uh, Rage Air did. The yeah, it's uh, a government type. 
it's only for flavor though. Yeah, but it's like we have some special like here. We have the Dane Law since. Yep. Since it's... you are the Dane Law. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's nice. And uh, let's see, we have the Realm, which most people are used to. Uh, except the new thing here would be the status of women, which have both been raged on and loved by some. So, but yeah, no, of course it's not very historical. <sighs> uh, on the other hand. You know, if people want to play the game that way, yeah. I don't really see why we should stop them. No, we have a lot of players that went Basque or Messalian, I think, just, yeah, it's, it's just so they could do what this what this one does. Um, it, it doesn't do anything that the, you haven't been able to do <laughs> before in the game. Uh, so let's see, we have obligations, which are the... This is completely remade, I think, the, how you get your taxes and the levies from yeah. your... Yeah, it's uh, kind of tied into the council um, mm. in that you can give the council more powers. Mm. No, this uh, oh, it's a, th uh, this uh, is the <coughs> levies yeah. and the tax. No, it's a more gradual, yeah. and much nicer uh, way of looking. And then we have the council. And then the council, all, yes. Yes, where you can give them more and more. So like this one enables the entire council. Like when this one gets triggered, the council can start doing stuff. One of the things they can do is that they can start, like, they can start a vote for a law they want. So, like, uh, through a favor. Let, let's actually start, let it run. Well, it's basically, it decides when the council has a say in matters. Yeah. Um, so we have uh, a couple of, there's nothing weird, I think. There is, I guess, the war declaration, as we saw, and if we... Revoke titles. Let's see. We have. I'm gonna assign one title to my son. So let's see. How will they vote? Uh, they are mostly okay with it, except my son will not. My other son will not be okay with it because my family member would lose a title. So they have also. They are not only dictated by. Their positions on matters they also have the whole like well there are things that just pl plainly make sense uh, for yeah. them everyone's uh, an egotist uh, i'm trying to find out all right let's put him if we can make him uh, oh i lost my court chaplain and uh, if we replace my st steward with him, I, w I want to get the like um, that he don't they don't agree. Your Damn vassals it. are too nice. Yeah, my vassals are too nice. Uh, how? How? how th this is weird. I'm trying to make them to not agree with me, so I can show how you get around. <laughs> the problem when they want to well one of the things we actually did was we we cut down the positive vassals opinions uh of their liege quite mm. a lot i think we actually have most of those modifiers uh so it's going to be harder to keep your vassals in line um however in your game here it seems like they're yeah they're pretty satisfied Th they're pretty satisfied probably uh, because i've given them all the titles so they're well, it does make sense. It's yeah. This is kind of an early adventure. Uh, I think though, if there's not enough people on the council, it will count as if they're voting no. So I could potentially maybe do it like this. There. Now, now it's a no, finally, and so uh, you have six seats. Blah blah blah. blah. Right, and going against council will make them discontent, allowing them to enter factions again. and will also be considered tyrannical and lower all your subjects' opinion of you by 10. Yeah, there so you like, go. Um, <clears throat> so cannot revoke this because I just granted So of course we, we didn't want to do something like the regencies, which can be very frustrating. Uh, you know, hard locking a feature mm. so you can't actually do it uh, is not a good idea in my opinion, usually. Uh, so you can override the council. Yes. And sometimes, uh, you know, it's it's fairly safe to do <laughs> as well. Yeah, we also have um we'll get I'll try and get back to the as time goes on so I can start passing some laws. But uh, 
we have also some other new cool features. So let's go to our court. We should have uh, someone with martial education. Promote commander. Assemble mercenary company. There we go. So I'm sending someone off to be, you know, we had the feature in uh, Horse Lords and uh, people really seem to like it. So we added it so every feudal lord can do it. It works a bit different. You get constantly a feed of money back as long as they're being used. Yeah, we added the dynamic mercenary system in Horse Lords where the Turkic tribes could send their... Um, was it brothers as well? Brothers and sons. Yeah, brothers and sons. Uh, off on a little adventures as dynamic mercenary companies. Mm. And right from the start, people said, well, why can't I do that as all these other yeah. countries? So we're now adding that as well. Yeah, and uh, oh, and he's on a corner. We also made it like updated the interface so you can always see like who they are, like, uh, who's using them, and they belong to you, mm. and so on. So it's not just going to be like, oh, I'm going to have to find them somewhere in this list. There you have. You can uh, see which ones are yours easily. Yeah. Uh, so like now he's being hired. I should actually see here mercenary hired. I get mm. the source of like here. I get some money, and you know money is good. A nice way of in securing some more income. Yeah. I still don't have enough. Uh, I have though. I do have plenty of money. It's interesting to see that little raiding adventure going on down in Mercia there. Yeah, uh, I kicked him off my uh, my <laughs> land, and then he went here. I'm like, oh, wait. well, he can live there. Yeah, right. I want to. I need a, I need a duchy to give him because I kind of want to. Uh, auto save. There we go. And declare war. Uh, what should we take from him? Oh wait, right, I have a truce. Oh, the Holy War can also be slightly dangerous. Yeah. That's the best way you want to play it. Though I do not have a truce with this guy. He starts off being invaded, I think. But he seems yeah. to have made it through that. Uh, uh, yeah. East seems, Anglia. Yeah, see, it seems like he actually failed his invasion. Can't hmm. trust your brothers. Yeah. Well, his misfortune is going to mean my success. Did you manage to capture uh, King Ayla? Uh, yeah, I gave him a blood eagle, of course. You did, yeah. I wonder if we can actually find him in the, like... I prefer four, four balls for the ravens, personally, I... but... Uh, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, but then he gets to live, and that's not fair. <laughs> Let's see, we well, have... Teach his own. <clears throat> uh, Northumbria, history... Was executed by King Hafta. No, it doesn't. We should add that. We should actually say Blood Eagle. Yeah, more death reasons uh, yeah. would all also be cool, of course. Uh, but yeah, so let's see. Uh, what more features do I have to cover? Well, we have a lot of features. Yeah. Um, we, you know, as usual, we added a lot of features in the patch, and some are mm. paid for. Um, but from our perspectives as developers, it's kind of, it's all one thing. Uh, it's an expansion, some, some features are free and some are not. Um, but one of the things we added was the new education system. Right, example. right. I actually prepared so I could, <laughs> I actually forgot about it. I have a strong daughter. Um, how should I raise her? So the idea with this new education system was basically that you would have a little bit more control over it, um, but not too much so it's kind of a tall order um, and the way we chose to work this is you, you pick a focus for the kid uh, just like you would uh, if it was your own character you, you know, and you pick the lifestyle essentially so that you, you pick a kind of lifestyle uh, for children uh, during their childhood and this will affect what kind of childhood traits they pick up and that's a new thing as well um, there are special traits that only children can have mm. and then they turn into proper adult traits depending on uh, the influence of the educator, uh, what used to be called the guardian before this patch. Uh, and of course their parents as well has some say in it. Um, <clears throat> and when they turn 12, is it? They uh, start have getting the, or 13, I can't remember. They yeah, I think it's 12. 12 they I get like a proper, their education trait. Like they get the 
start making their education. They, they start getting adult traits instead of these yeah. childhood traits, and they turn into adult traits. Uh, and they also kind of get different experiences, and there are different mm. uh, focuses for adolescents. Yeah, but you also get to pick a focus for a second time, which lets you decide the education yeah, it's, it's, rate. Yeah, exactly. You know, when you're mm. out of childhood and become a teenager, it's more about education. Yeah. And uh, so teen angst. I actually got the question, like, can, can you choose to neglect them as a education? I was like, well, that is kind of struggle. Yeah, that's, that was kind of the point, you know. Yeah. You let them run free, um, and they could turn out bullies, or they yeah. could turn out being bullied. Yeah. Uh, but that's basically kind of a social Darwinist form of uh, childhood education. Uh, so let's see. For some I reason, it always reminds me of Robin Hobbs' uh, assassins. So the thing novels. becomes... She's probably gonna get married off, so I'm... Diplomacy is always good if I'm marrying it to someone in my family. We really try to balance these so you, you can get good things out of them all. Uh, and there is no choice that's really the best. However, <clears throat> you know, if you want to groom them to be a ruler, mm. um, they're not all appropriate. <laughs> no. Um, it also becomes like, now I am, since I've been playing this, I've been starting to think, all right, uh, sure, this son is not going to be like the king of my realm, but, you know, he's probably going to be a commander in it. So, struggle. Oh, that's one way of doing it. Yeah. Um, it's always good to have a backup son who should probably not be ambitious, at least, but at least competent. Mm. Oh, yeah, a small little change. It's probably not something. It's written in the change log, but it's probably not something you'd notice. It's before uh, the sieges used to be skirmish phase, but I changed it to melee phase because it, it was kind of weird that <coughs> castles would be weak against uh, specifically like when you assault you don't just sit there with arrows you have right. the melee troops walking in and fighting so sounds, it's kind of like sounds okay to me yeah but it's good that you mention it yeah <laughs> <laughs> see, see what so, the team does when the cat is away yeah uh <clears throat> no uh speaking of that we've changed how basically the dynamic to warfare hmm. right yeah um no, it's not super realistic, but, you know, I wanted to move away from these super decisive battles uh, and the fact that, you know, it, it's fairly easy to beat your opponent in a couple of uh, battles and then you can save and reload if it doesn't work out. So I wanted wars to be a more dragged out affair. And part of the solution was that we added the shattered retreat mechanic that is quite familiar to those who have played EU4. Uh, it means basically that uh, losses in general are down, you know, so fewer people die uh, in battles. Mm -hmm. uh, and when an army has to retreat, it will retreat a few provinces back uh, and cannot be touched meanwhile. Uh, another thing we did was that when your armies are standing in friendly territory, they will actually reinforce. So, you know, uh, the levies in the garrisons would actually reinforce before, but now it will go directly to the raised troop. Uh, if there is one. Oh, I'm probably gonna lose that one then. We're that doesn't, see. That doesn't no. look so good, actually. Or I might get lucky. I became a brilliant strategist. Ooh! That's close. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's yes. really close. Okay. Uh, good one, though. Yeah, so I think we're gonna see him retreat. Yeah, so here's the shadow retreat where he's moving away. Yeah. And then he's gonna go and have his host somewhere else, hopefully. Unless he's decided... He's going to have the Duchy of Lancaster. Yeah. Um, another part of this package with the uh, tougher warfare is largely thanks to you. You've been working on the AI. Yeah. Uh, toughening up the military AI especially. And I think you've done a really good job. Uh, it does a much better job than it, than it used to. Yeah, there was a lot of weird stuff uh, in it. Like I could find legacy stuff that is yeah. like from EU3 time. Which is like well, the the basic framework <laughs> is, is, yeah. is based on well, not EU three, but yeah. uh, on Rome. no. But I just think it's uh, kind of amazing how um, how old this game is now. Actually, it's yeah, it's uh, been four years. Yeah, four years, and we're still making stuff for it. Yeah. So yeah, the and so anyway, the the idea is that wars uh, are dragged out for longer, and they're not as decisive. And there's kind of a there's always a way to bounce back. Mm. 
uh, even if things start out pretty grim. Yeah, and as we can see here, if I speed up, we should see that my troops slowly recover from uh, that battle against him. Yeah. <clears throat> Though he is refilling his pastor, so I'm just gonna cheat a little. Raiders are nasty. Well, he's an adventurer. He wants to... Yeah, raiding adventurer. Yeah. He wants to make a home for himself. I only have two commanders. Uh, take my son. There. The family out on a picnic. <laughs> you think you'll win this one? Uh, no, but I have mercenaries nearby. So. Always good to have mercs. Yeah. <clears throat> I wonder if I can change law now. No, still. How many years? Ah. Oh. It's this year. You're still over your domain limit as well. Uh, yeah, but it's only one over your, your domain limit. You don't have to be... That's true. Uh, on the other hand, positive opinions uh, are harder to come by. That's true. Uh, I actually wonder... How uh, are they... They're all glory hounds now, except Yudohuf. Mm, you like to. Mm. Two counselors. <coughs> Alright, so we have... Damn it, I should have picked him as that. Mm, can I... No, he won't be happy. Uh, there, That's also a new thing we've added so you can change. Like, before, if you reappoint him as something, he gets all the opinion penalties and so on. Yeah. So we added the change council position, which will let you... Move you know, them around. Yeah, move them around without actually getting the penalty. And I want him to be my seer. Yeah, it's there kind of go. it's more important now that you you're careful with those negative opinions, and you need to be able to move your counselors around. Yeah, everybody seems to be happy. Uh, will you surrender? Mm, no. Where the hell are you? Mm. He's resilient. In Sudovaya, so he's up here somewhere. He's up there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, there, okay, in the highlands. <clears throat> nope, come here. Well. It's a shame he attacked you. He should have gone after someone else instead. Oh, it would well. actually be nice to have some kind of way of encouraging these adventurers and raiders to... Yeah, just to go, go somewhere else. Yeah, Maybe here, here's some money, go attack this yeah. guy instead. I'm waiting for... That would be a nice idea, actually, for an expansion. <laughs> what are you doing? <sighs> I'm trying to catch him. <laughs> you should probably wait until he decides where he wants to be, though. There we go. There you go. And now I got 100. And fours. There we go. And we... Now we can finally try and... Uh, did I die? No. Someone died, I think. Doing. I haven't seen this event. I've worked here forever, and I've not seen this one. Hmm. Yeah, well, that's why we have content designers. Yeah. <laughs> there we go, and let's start this law change. And you see, we since we've remade the entire interface, we also remade the voting of laws. And every, if you as a player are a vassal, you will get. An event where you get to choose here how do i want to vote on this issue mm -hmm. so you can like pick yeah but you know i want to be able to that the king can revoke titles which for usually doesn't go that well right? well um the reason or, or there's there's a certain pressure to change uh these council laws uh right because um yes they can form factions if they feel that they don't have enough power yeah uh, the that are these. Yeah. They they can now form factions. Uh, it's the just that I ah, can. Okay, sorry. I can. <clears throat> with, that it's attention. legal for the king to. Yeah. <clears throat> so let's see. Uh, they're probably gonna say no. Like you know, they don't want me to be able mm -hmm. to revoke stuff. But I do have here. You know. Damn it. Okay, he doesn't want to. Uh,
he wants to. He likes me. So he, and he doesn't have an interest in in the current matters. Uh, and so I can ask him that you know I want your support, and that means I owe him a favor, which means he can he can use that against me later. And yeah, the, the whole favor mechanic is also new and it's part of the parcel mm. with the new council system. Uh, maybe you should explain what that means. Yeah, it, it is like. Um, you could call it a currency, I guess. It, it is a, it's a token you can use as a... Uh, for instance, you can have a favor with someone not in your realm. And you it's can not a currency so much as kind of a relation yeah. thing you have with other characters. Well, it's, it's something you spend, so I view it True. as a currency. True. And, uh, you know, I can buy a favor he doesn't want to, but and I can use that later as in, in a marriage or so on. Uh, and now I've requested his uh, support on council, which should make it so he votes according to their has approved institution. So now I can uh, revoke titles. So if we would go, now it's legal for me to actually do it. And he will agree to, since he's returning, a f like, me asking him support, he will support me in the council for 36 yeah. months, and he will then vote accordingly in matters. And since I want to revoke this, he is returning a favor to me to revoke it. But here you have, like, he doesn't want to lose a title, that's why he's voting no. And the glory hound, like, my brother is gonna lose the title, I don't want my brother to lose a title. Um, but the uh, glory hound... He doesn't really care, so it's I have a high diplomacy, that's why he's voting with me. And the loyalists will, of course, vote as I want to. And then I've manipulated him to vote as I want to. But I'm not going to revoke the title. Uh, Always good to have loyalists on the council. Yes, but they're much, they should be much harder to get now. I think, like, while it was in development, we had a period where, you know, you always only had loyalists. Um, I wonder if I can, yeah. None of these are proper reform so has, uh, has your infamy changed in this game uh, at all? Not much. All right. It's uh, still very low there. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm a small nation, which means any infamy <clears throat> I generate is like nothing. Yeah, this is probably the most controversial new thing we've yeah. added to the game. And um, some people like it, some are very vocal about not liking it. Yeah. Uh, and that's the coalition and infamy system. And now, this is kind of a, a an external mechanic to go with the internal changes. And, it, and the reason we added this is basically to make expansion a bit harder. Uh, not while you're small, uh, but when you grow to be a really powerful, big, huge blob on the map. So it's a counter-blobbing mechanic. And it's familiar to EU4 players. Um, but it seems like, you know, some people don't like it because... Uh, it makes the game harder. <laughs> I also know that some people have talked about maybe, you know, uh, Christians and Muslims shouldn't form coalitions together uh, and so on. And they, that's a valid point, but I'd say it depends on how big and threatening uh, the target is, essentially. Oh, it was one of the... Okay, I didn't realize it was the education events. I was like, all right, this is just one of the normal play events. Yeah, that, that was one of the, that as a... Education ed, ed, Yeah, education, like, mm -hmm. as my son that was getting educated, he got an event about something and I get a, I can cut in and change his development. Um, yeah, you're still I, able to steer uh, their development. Mm -hmm. um, of course, it might take a little while to learn what these childhood traits can actually develop into, and yeah. so on. Let's see, I have some... So it's going to take, you know, it's kind of... A, so we have made some fundamental changes to gameplay, so it's going to take players a little while to get accustomed to it, I think. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll see uh, if we need to make any changes and balancing tweaks, mm. basically. But most of it should be very moddable as well. Uh, so if there's things you don't yeah. that don't suit your tastes, you can probably mod it away. Yeah, or add more, like... Um... With the council, you can have uh, mod in as many as you want. Yeah, so there's no limit. Yeah, that's a pretty cool thing. That uh, and we have our five regular councillors, but then there are minor mm. titles that can give you a seat, basically, as a minor member of the council as well. 
and it supports, uh, let's see if I do it with parties, uh, like it supports like any of these can be voted on by the council. Mm -hmm. you, it's a lot of scripting job to like for the mothers to implement it, but they can do it for any, it's not only declare war, it's not only for, um, what's it called? Uh, for the revoke title and so on. You can make it so, yeah, the council has to vote on if uh, if you can s send a gift. Simple thing as that. Or if you're allowed to educate your child. <laughs> well, that's a not very useful one, probably. But no, but I mean, <laughs> it's the, possible, yeah. the possibilities are endless for the mothers. And mm -hmm. uh, when we were designing the like implementation details, we were thinking a lot about like the modability, like, our mothers can make amazing things with this. All right, we have to make sure they're gonna be able to do that. Yeah. Uh, like uh, the two. Uh, sure, we don't give our mothers a lot of tools, but the things that are there, they don't come from nothing. We do think a lot about modability for our games. Yeah, it's like that. Um, uh, what's it called? <laughs> Longevity uh, tra uh, flag you can put on traits that we don't actually use in the game, or immortality yeah. even. Yeah, immortality. Um, yeah. So, mothers can create like vampire traits that make their characters stop aging and live forever and so on. Mm. And you know, I, I'd really like to <laughs> do something with mm. that, but it's supernatural, so we well, can't really go down well, that. Well, have vampires in the game? Haven't, nah, haven't, uh, haven't, haven't we promised that? Kind of. Halfway. Well, it would be appropriate, <laughs> right? If we. Yeah. Now that we acquired. Uh, White Wolf and the World of Darkness franchise. This is also a big change uh, with how alliances work. Like now they're like set in stone, more or less. Um, yeah, that's another thing we, we didn't really talk about. Um, so let's see. But alliances are now more of a player choice. Uh, you can now choose to marry someone, create a royal marriage without necessarily having a full alliance. Uh, so you have more control over who, who you want to be friends with uh, without having to, you know, refrain from royal marriages. So the first step now, when you, when you get when you get a royal marriage, you get a non-aggression pact, um, and then you have to take it one step further if you want to have a proper alliance. Mm. Yeah, and we even have the nice tooltip telling you exactly, because I've been using this a lot now, like, oh shit, the guy I'm at war with, uh, war with he just got an alliance. All right, how are they allied? Mm -hmm. So I have, can check it uh, more properly, like, and. Yeah, it gives you more and control. And, and kill the person that makes them allied. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It gives you more control and it helps the AI to uh, form proper alliances as well without using necessarily the coalition system. Wait, I'm at war? Oh no, I allied him and he was at war. Okay. I did not. Okay, he's fighting over there. That's not what I wanted. Okay. Uh, anyway, I was gonna show this that it shows, because now you you can be for sure that the troops will be committed by this guy. So you have Mercia is allied to the Petty Kingdom of Wessex, and it, he will be called, and he will not say no. Yeah, that's the thing with alliances. We we basically remove this call mechanic. Uh, if you ha have agreed to a proper mm. alliance, you cannot refuse. And it also so. means that these are, oh, damn it, they have allied each other, but they are not allied by, like, uh, they don't necessarily mean they're allied, the Carling Blob. Or no, Carling... I mean, it, it's, it makes sense, you know, mm. that uh, alliances would be kind of a deeper form mm. uh, of royal marriage. Yeah. So, yeah, so you have um, King of Aquitaine, are they allied to, no, they don't seem to be allied to East France. No. They're not allied to him. So, like, we no longer have the calling... Yeah, but you wrote the, the AI for this, yes. I guess. Yeah, but uh, the AI is pretty good at, like, the... Term. What uh, probably the AI is thinking is, I'm scared of Umayyad, and West Francia is, I'm also scared of Umayyad, mm -hmm. and we should get together. <laughs> we should get together sometime. Yeah. <laughs> and have tea. Yeah, pretty much. <clears throat> so, yeah. So, it's, it's more... Um, I also did some stuff. Now the Mongols are not... Here, if I spawn them, I could show that because if you try to ally the Mongols, they will now more or less tell you why would I ally you? You're next, right? So, like the the they understand that they're going to conquer the world. Yeah, pretty uh, much. So, yeah. so the the Mongol AI has been fixed because it had a P 
period of time where it was like, yeah, I'm just gonna sit out here in the corner, like around here, and just chill. Did the Mongols cause you a lot of problems with the uh, coalition mechanic? Mm, no, they triggered coalition mechanics and didn't care and just kept on rolling. And steamrolled everyone. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, but uh, and at the same time, I think these have been weakened. Like, the reason why Mongols are so powerful is because they have so doom stacks of troops. Mm -hmm. While these have been, people were complaining they were way too OP and too easy to play and so on. So what the Pashanaks or the Mongols? Oh, no, no, just the normal nomads. All right. Like, yeah, yeah, the nomad. So they've also been like Mechanic. tweaked and <coughs> made mm -hmm. better. Um, Right. Yeah, it's really tough balancing the troop numbers uh, for the nomads versus the feudal countries. That's been a chore. And uh, was there some more... Right, we were talking about favors and I did owe now my son a favor. Uh, which of my sons was it? Uh, one of them, I owe one of these a favor, so I'm just th thinking I'm gonna... He's a uh, feudal lord, right? Yep. So we have... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, my son is chasing tail. Uh, let's see, I think... You raised him well. Yeah, I guess. Right, I think I think this is the favor, the guy who owes one character, yeah, my dad owes me a favor and when when you someone owes you a favor you get this alert which will tell you that you have someone hmm. and it will also tell you what it means, like what can you do with it and so on. Yeah, it's a pretty intimidating tooltip yeah. there, uh, that tells you all the things you can use favor for. <clears throat> So we have, for instance, if we want to start a vote, though my liege recently had a vote. Though I could ask for, like, I, if I'm um, under attack from uh, someone else in the realm, I could, with the favor, I can ask for realm peace. Like, mm -hmm. I, you know, I want, can we stop all fighting in the realm? Because I'm losing here. Yeah, that's kind of a, an old concept that has kicked around for a long, mm. long time, the king's peace. Yeah, we had it uh, in Crown Authority, was kind of representing it. Yeah. So, uh, and now it is, uh, like, all right, I, I'm not my leech, so I, there's a button there. Uh, let's see if I can just... Uh, there, enforce, run peace, and, and I click that, the council will, this button is only enabled if the council have power, because essentially what it is, is you, together with all of the strongest of your vassals, are guaranteeing that the realm, there's going to be peace in the realm, so you have to have... Good backing there. Yeah. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and they, they approve, like, the... They're actually just persuaded by my um, by my uh, diplomacy, it seems. So yeah, because they don't care. Uh, they they're pr uh, glory hounds, so they all just wanna conquer new land, and they sensible vassals. Yeah, and th they will get a warning like you know you gotta stop fighting within three months, and after that three uh, months is up, it ends. Oh. What a shame you're not a lunatic. I love this. Oh, yes, I love it. Yes. <laughs> oh, I think we had a bug that we fixed in 2.5 as yeah. well with the lunatic one. Was it bugged? Yeah, I, I don't remember. I just saw it in the changelog and it's right. one of the content uh, creators that does that. So. Yeah. Yeah, I should mention that, that uh, our content designers have a lot of freedom uh, mm. about what kind of events they put into the game and so on. So. Even I can get very surprised <laughs> by some of the events that pop up. Let's see. I don't know. What should we take questions from the chat? I don't. Uh, we probably forgot a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, we had a lot of little convenience features and stuff uh, as well. Hmm. But I think we've talked about the major uh, changes to the mechanics. Yeah. Um. 
I'd say that the feel to the game has changed quite a lot with these drawn out wars. Um, and uh, the fact that it's basically harder to expand quickly, at least. You, you need to, to slow down a little bit. Um, and that's that was kind of the point, really. <laughs> it should be more involved, and you need to plan a little bit more carefully uh, in order to advance or expand quickly in the game. You're on camera again, guys. Hello. Awesome. Uh, All right, so... Uh, I don't know if we have any good questions <laughs> or questions at all. I think I think the most important question that we've seen so far is why is Glitterhoof not a powerful uh, vassal? Because he's not a vassal. Ah, <laughs> then why? <laughs> Can they hear your questions now? Or? They should be able to hear okay, my cool. questions. Mm. Uh, yeah, because uh, if you try... I cannot give him la a land title because uh, otherwise he would start having like how the game works would mean that he would start getting babies with people and stuff. <laughs> you cannot, I don't think you can imagine how many bugs uh, you found with this horse character oh. uh, and they were quite disturbing. Mostly. Yeah, and it was um, Q uh, first day QA got their hands on it, they had a field day. They made up a uh, Glitterhoof Pope. <laughs> yeah, and all the bastard children and so yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, Norwegian Lols wants to know if this DLC changes the way we play Republics. Uh, I don't think... Not as far as I know, unless you've yeah. snuck stuff in there, but... I don't uh, remember anything, but I do know they've changed uh, for tribals, and they've changed for um, nomads. Well, one of the childhood education focuses is basically geared uh, at republics as well. If you raise mm. your children for thrift, uh, that's the way you make them good businessmen and good uh, doges of republics. Oh yeah, I already have one on thrift. Yeah. Um... Uh, Jorlim wants to know about uh, race scripting, but I think that's something for the forum, so maybe Bjorn can get back to that. You have been collecting some of the questions in chat. Now, Bjorn is not on mic, but he's looking very solemn here in the booth, being <laughs> like, yes, yes, this is happening. All right. So hopefully a lot of the questions you guys have will be answered on the forums. I think that's it, right? I think, mm. we're, I think, we're, I think we're done with the stream. Okay, well, thank you guys uh, for listening to us ramble here. Yeah. Um, um, I hope you enjoy Conclave, essentially, and uh, I expect us to keep patching and tweaking it for a bit until we release the next expansion. <laughs> Excellent. Thank, thanks for watching, everyone, and see you guys later. I'm going to switch over to this old CK standby now, so goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye-bye. Bye-bye.